Hello and welcome to presentation about integration testing uh, with environments framework. Uh, my name is Andrei Nikitin. I am member of Build OBS team at SUSE, and my team takes responsibility for infrastructure behind Open Build service. Okay, I understand that integration testing is a very wide and it's quite complex area. Um, the, for me, the, the biggest problem here is that there is no common uh, tool, no common way to communicate, uh, to integrate different products, or at least to demonstrate that different products can work together. Um, Sometimes it's easy to do, but uh, sometimes very hard to do. And uh, again, there is no common approach or, or that, that we can follow to understand, to easily understand each other. So what means cross product here? Uh, it means that uh, there's several products. Each product has maybe own life cycle. It has own teams. It has own quality control. Um, and uh, we assume it's a good quality, but it's hard to prove that several products can communicate together, or at least it's hard to script these scenarios. And usually there is no expert that can cover all involved products at the same level. And so we, I, I think uh, we are lacking at the moment tool that we can define how we script uh, some complex scenario of cross product communication. Okay, so when I speak about cross uh, about integration testing, uh, we of course speak about some test scenarios. And test scenarios they usually can run on some product topology. Um, this means that there is a list of products involved. They each of them is some particular version. Maybe it's distribution type. Maybe we. They, it may be some fork, so maybe custom build, etc. Also, it's a very complex topic is dependency management because for each product definition, maybe we need some tweaks in how to satisfy dependencies. And of course, there are test scenarios that um, basically define expected behavior or maybe they demonstrate some problem in this cross product communication. Uh, below is uh, one example of product topology definition. For example, we have web server, Apache web server, particular version, we have database of particular version, and we have some project that we are currently working on. So we want to run some script scenarios on this topology and see outcome. And now uh, comes dream, dream framework requirements. Because I did spend quite a lot of time uh, on integration testing, on cross-product uh, communication, and um, I find that uh, the, the, the test framework that runs tests, it should not actually care about how dependencies are satisfied. This means uh, it's different uh, dimension because no matter how we satisfy dependencies, we should be able to run some script and see whether uh, product work or not. Maybe it's because of dependency, maybe not, but we are still should be able to run scripts. So dependency management is optional. It should be done on different level of of testing. Or, or maybe it's it's not the part of testing itself. Uh, also the test framework should not enforce how we deliver the products. Maybe we build them from source, maybe we give it to some default packages, or maybe we get it from some particular distribution. And again, the test framework, it should, it should be able to use uh, binaries to test uh, artifacts from different kinds of distributions. Then the test framework, it should not have privileged access to the system. Um, because we can start database servers without privileged access. We can start web servers without privileged access. We can, most of tools, they run without privileged access. And it simplifies troubleshooting so much when all the services involved in, in um, test scenario, they run under single user. 
Uh, it doesn't cover all the scenarios, but uh, at least it, it, it is possible to test 99% of use cases with in single user uh, environment. And it helps so much that we don't care about permissions in this cross-product communications. And again, the goal here is to show that at least in some scenario, uh, products can communicate properly. And again, if it covers 99 of all test cases, then it, it, it's good. It's a good framework. So the, the script uh, test scenarios, they may be flat shell commands. Um, they should not bring extra complex dependencies because we should not spend time on troubleshooting dependencies that are required for testing framework because it's not the time we want to spend to. And again, the topology can be input parameter to test scenario. So we can run the same test scenario or maybe on different version of database server, or maybe database server is built from source and some patches are applied. And we, we want to make sure that a new test scenario that, uh, that it works well on different topologies or the problem is fixed in one topology or the problem is introduced or speed is better, whatever. Um, and uh, this uh, dream framework, it will bring new level of communication. If we can find a way to satisfy all these requirements for dream test framework, um, then it will be very easy to, to describe again complex scenario bug reports and tutorials maybe an automated testing maybe some proof of concept and improve cross-team communication and to be able to handle different versions of the same product or maybe different distribution type or maybe there are some forks we need to introduce a new abstraction layer um, that will hide all details specific to these uh, different versions. Um, so meet environments. Uh, environments is special folder with some script generated, executable scripts generated inside this command. So in this example, we have environment called mydb and it has start script. And if we use such folder in our script, uh, we basically don't care what's inside that start command. We can look, of course, into it if we need all the details, but if we write write a um, script scenario, it's just mydb start. And we know that there is we started some database server and how we started it and what exactly database server is there, it's not that important, it's input parameter. So in every, next round can be different and we can all we care is about to compare behavior of products of different versions or maybe different vendors so again there's common start start stop status also we can execute sql command and that um, database and then we can compare output and the same we can do not for, for database server, we can do it for web server. And again, it can be Apache web server, or maybe it's some Nginx or some different. All we care if we have wrappers generated for it, we can start that server, we can check status, we can query uh, some uh, resource inside that web server using curl command, and then we can stop. Uh, so the idea is to have uh, these folders with script generated for each topology that is defined as in parameter. And moreover, it is not one only one instance that we can use. There are some several slots that we can uh, use. So we can generate three database servers. They can be of the same topology, I mean the same version, the same distribution type, or they may be completely different. And again, we can run test scenario and see outcome if it changes or not. Maybe we will use them in some load balancer or maybe combine in cluster or maybe try replication and see if it works for particular input topology. For example, replication between different versions or chain replication between three versions or replication between servers of different vendors. Uh, we have uh, one script that covers them all and topology is input parameter to, to this scenario. 
And the same with web server, we can start several web servers and use them independently or together, maybe some load balancer, um, etc. And again, uh, one of the aspects that we use for this environment is uh, distribution type. So either we use default packages that are installed on system, like in the first command, uh, or maybe we can generate environment that can work with a product that is built from source code. Then we specify a location basically to source location location of source of this product. And this environment will be able to basically build this product and prepare it for using. Or maybe we can use some tar distribution and want to compare to it want to compare behavior between version or maybe with source code that we apply at patches. So, and each environment, it will cover specifics that needed to handle this particular distribution type and this particular version. So environments, it's not most like framework that we can use for any product. It's more an approach for using, so if you have one product that has all environments and second product that has all environments, we can uh, either yeah build script that shows interaction between uh, these products and then put uh, input parameter as version or maybe yeah, build it from source code, code etc. And um, so. This example is kind of useless, but again, it demonstrates, I think, powerful how powerful this approach is. So let's start uh, randomly, either Apache or Nginx web server. Um, we generate, this is bash script, so we generate the number between 10 and 5, and between 1 and 0 and 10, and then randomly either create a patch environment, this is special code that is used in, in, this, in this repository, or Nginx environment. And then we start that environment, here we don't know, maybe it may be a patch or it may be Nginx. Then we create some file in special folder that is predefined in this environment, and then we query this file, and basically, yeah, we did this test is like and check that we, when we query it, we get string my test. And we can do an infinite loop if we want, or we can complicate this scenario uh, as much as we want. And without environments, I believe that either the script would be much more complex, or uh, it will introduce some abstractions that, again, it's hard to maintain and hard to keep in mind all the details that are going on. And one is important aspect that we can use the same commands in script and we can use them from terminal when we like do some scenario manually when we start some services or try some commands, we execute the same commands in command line and we use tab completion to see these commands. Another real life example is open key. It's very hard to get open key started and with environments it is like few commands. Again, it relies that all dependencies are satisfied, but again, once you make sure that dependencies are satisfied and you see that this script doesn't work, you have something to ask, okay, I get these um, commands. And for another person that tries to help, for example, it's more clear what's going on. And then they will ask specific logs that they know are used in this environment. Another example is mirror cache. It, it, this is quite complex scenario. It starts for Apache instances and one mirror cache instance. Mirror cache is mirror redirector. So it accepts requests and tries to redirect it based on location from request came in. It uses some um, basically, yeah, it, it, here it redirects that specific address redirected to a specific Apache server according to how mirrors were defined in mirror cache database. Uh, so this concludes uh, my presentation, my experience. I hope you find it useful. So happy testing.